Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we'll be going over nine popular launchers here in 2017. Launchers are a cool way to easily customize the way your phone looks and feels just by a quick software download through the Play Store. It's uh, easier than ever to install these because unlike previous versions of Android where you have to do some rooting or installing, by means of a USB connection to a computer. Again, this one just is just a simple download away and you're ready to use. Some of these will be a simple graphic uh, overlay on top of your existing Android experience, such as the SAO launcher that brings up a quick launch shortcut key that you can use to customize with different programs as well as setting controls. Whereas some of the deeper launchers such as the One Launcher, Arrow Launcher, and the Blackberry Launcher completely changes your wallpaper in addition to the way that your menu drawers might operate and gives you transition effects as well. So let's take a closer look one by one. So the first one, the SAO launcher, as aforementioned, is the simplest. All nine of these launchers are free, by the way, so some of them may contain a few ads, but they're not too crippling. So this one, again, is the simplest. doesn't really change too much, but gives you access to quick launch settings, your profile, such as your available memory, gives you your SMS as well as missed calls, a map uh, of your current location, and also popular applications that you've installed on your phone. So it's an easy way to access all of this content by one hand, and tapping anywhere away on the display simply closes up this uh, skin or launcher. So it's not too obtrusive, and it's there when you want it, uh, kind of little neat feature. The next one, the TSF launcher, again, is a bit more of a fully featured one. It gives you access to this interesting symbolic widget that tells you your weather information, time and date, both in digital and analog format, and the CPU processor, as well as how much it's been occupied. You can see here that also changes the animation of the way that you can navigate between the screens screens, but in terms of the main navigation drawer, um, there's not too much that it changes. You still have access to the same layout, but again, there's transition effects now between each page, uh, which is pretty cool. There is a universal search now on the very top that you can use to search through your commonly used programs, and also alpha alphatizes it in this uh, indexed way, which is kind of neat. Uh, different from the stock Android 5.0.1 Lollipop that you have you saw previously on this Nexus 4. It was in this grid layout. So there's also a Google search in the very top. So there's a few other settings that it gives you. Also, you can change here to change again the effect, sort by your applications, maybe by um, alphabet uh, or by size, for instance, multiple choices, and also more effects that you can go through. So it's pretty easy to use. And you can go through the settings as well to make this your default. In my case, I didn't set this to default. So when I tap on home, it's going to take me back to the stock Android skin. So the next one I'm going to take a quick look at is the Atom Launcher, another popular choice in the Play Store. And again, this is not set by default, so it's going to give me a notification. And what Atom Launcher tries to do is give you this more graphically attractive UI that is supposedly all black and white, but unfortunately there are still quite a few icons that you may have, uh, and also games and new downloads that are in color that uh, creates a mismatch with the UI. But Supposedly, there's even a wallpaper that's black and white. It makes it similar to the LG Prodded 3, if you guys remember that phone, and it makes it a bit more stylized and uh, attractive looking. Even all of your applications you can see here is also in this black and white grid manner, and it can also search through my apps by name or also view it back in a different way. So not quite as many features as the last uh, skin that we saw, but this one does give you a more interesting, at least attractive look for some folks. So let's go home and check out the next one. The Lens Launcher, okay, so this one is another interesting one that is a symbolic uh, way to easily access all of your applications at once in this one screen, uh, arranged in a series of dots. So basically, each dot represents one application in your phone, and you can change the size of the dots as well as the apps. And the way that it works kind of through this uh, physical engine is as you move your hands around, it's going to speed up or accelerate and slow down and get to the app that you want from the corners of the phone. So it's easy to use one-handed, but it takes some time to get used to because you have to know exactly where all your apps are located on the screen. So let's try and take a look at that. So this is, in my case, all the apps that I have on this particular phone. You can see it looks like quite a few, but I can simply tap my finger on it and it becomes enlarged. And I can also rotate my, my fingers around the display to access all of the individual apps. So let's say you're really fluent with uh, the few apps that you've installed on your phone and you know exactly where it is. This could be a fast way to have access and a glance screen view all of your programs installed on your phone and have access to it. So not for everyone, but an interesting scan nonetheless. 
The next one is the Z Launcher, which uh, is also a pretty immersive launcher. It's actually created by Nokia. Um, so you found it on the N tablet that we saw. And this one uses handwriting recognition as well as software to learn your preferences and what you search over time. So if I search something like A, it's gonna search that up through all of my apps that have an A on it and also search the web. So it uses handwriting recognition by default in this main screen and there's no other wallpapers that I can go through. So it's kind of interesting and it's actually very accurate and responsive, very elegant to look at. You have a different view of your tabbed applications at the bottom and there's also a drawer view again that's been indexed by alphabet. So this is how this is sorted, very similar to what you have on actual tablets uh, made by Nokia with an Android skin on top. Next one is the Aero Launcher. And the Aero Launcher, as you can see here, is pretty similar to what you saw on stock, but uh, it's like Zen UI in the sense that you have a bit more folders and there's more transition effects that you can program as well. There's a people list where you can have your favorite people and contacts showing up and also a recent one for notifications on the left. And then the applications themselves, again, are fairly like stock Android, but again, it's been indexed in this uh, manner that's a little bit different, and you can also search through your apps. Again, transition effects. If you I can also access a universal search drawer by dragging down from any of the home screens, and you can see that's pretty easy to swipe away and look through both your applications as well as search the internet. But interestingly enough, it's through Bing instead of Google for quick searches online. So you can access this on any of the screens, as you can see here. So the next one we're going to check out is BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry is a little clever because they really want you to just use the skin that they design. It's free. All of these are. So how they want you to do that is you actually can't open it up at all unless you set it as the default one. So actually, let's go through and do that. Set the default as the BlackBerry launcher. And now, once I go home, it's going to be BlackBerry. So how BlackBerry has set things up is, again, they give you some of their services, such as messaging, BlackBerry Hub Plus services, um, access to the Play Store, Calendar, and some of the Google services on the side as well. In addition to specific BlackBerry apps, some of them that require additional downloading when you tap on them, like BlackBerry Messenger, Tasks, Device Search, pass Password Keeper, and Contacts. So again, it transforms this into a Another experience that is similar to a BlackBerry phone if you ever used some of those, such as the Priv, especially ones that run on Android already. So it's sorted by three tabs in the menu here, your app drawer, by widgets, by shortcuts. You can see it's color coded as well, and also your main tasks. So it's a, a more deeper revamp of how Android is experienced and how it works. Um, usually when you first install these uh, skins or launchers, it also changes the wallpaper, but since I've already customized it and went through all of them and tested them out, um, unfortunately you can see it's no longer changing it the second time around, but if I go through settings now, I can actually go back to the original uh, wallpapers that uh, came with the specific launcher, so that's what I want to do. So for instance, tap on display and I go into wallpaper, uh, you can see all of these, some of them by launchers, is where you can tap into to look at the launcher's specific uh, wallpapers that they brought in. So for each you know, launcher, you have various wallpapers that you can customize it with. Next launcher, the Windows 10 launcher, attempts to replicate the style of a Windows phone on your Android phone. Now this is probably a not as a mainstream app, just because you know Windows Phone is not really regarded as a great uh, mobile OS, uh, at least not a very popular one, but you do have access to a Metro-like interface of all your tiled uh, apps, but uh, you can see that there obviously are a few differences, such as the fact that the Windows Mobile app here isn't really Windows Mobile, uh, but there is stuff like Facebook, Internet uh, Edge is actually just a shortcut to Chrome, and so on and so forth. Down below here though, you can tap on here to actually bring up a list of all your applications, and you can search through them, kind of like the way you would on a desktop running on Windows 10, so this is actually pretty cool. So they did a decent job, you know, the best that they could to really uh, imitate the experience that you would have on a Windows phone. But if you tap on anything else, it basically breaks the illusion and it takes you back to the traditional Android uh, application. The last one here is also similar to the Windows one that we just saw in the sense that it also tries to uh, replicate, in this case, uh, an iOS product. So you might be fooled into thinking, oh, this looks like an iPhone now. And this is actually the default wallpaper that you see as well. So it seems like an iPhone and the icons and everything have been repositioned. It's gotten rid of most of your widgets as well, just to make things a lot more similar to what you would find on iOS. But again, the illusion is broken when you tap on anything since the applications are just shortcuts to what you already have.
So anyways, those are 10 popular uh, launchers. There's also um, many more, such as uh, Zen UI, which is designed by ASUS. It's the most popular one, but I don't really classify it as a launcher when it's already running on their ASUS phones and tablets, which we've reviewed. But these are 10 of the less mainstream ones that you can find through the App Store, but uh, still nicely designed and give you a varying degree of customization depending on what you're looking for. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was a closer look at some popular launchers for Android.